right, we got 3.4 today. Uh, it's one of the most important lessons here from the log section because this will enable us to solve equations either in exponential form or log form. Uh, real powerful when we're solving for uh, you know exponents and also yeah when they start out in log form we can solve for the x value so um, we'll walk you through them there's a lot of variations to these so you're going to need a lot of practice in recognizing which style of solving technique that we need so these first few are usually designed to where you don't need a calculator uh, we're going to get a common base on these if possible if I can rewrite it to where you have the same exact base, then we can set the exponents equal to each other. The big thing you gotta watch out for, some people will say, oh well, I need that six to be squared and then they'll be the same, but what you wanna really do actually is change the way 36 looks. We're gonna change 36 as, whoops, six squared. And mathematically, 36 is the same thing as six squared, so we're just substituting that out right there. And then you're going to drop down that x plus 1, that'll still be in the exponent. And then this other side, you just bring it down here. Since the other side, we already had the 6 right there, we don't need to mess with that side. And then uh, after that, then we can set the exponents equal. So we'll do that by going 2x plus 2 equals x plus 6. And then we can solve for x. We can subtract x from both sides. We could uh, subtract 2 from both sides there, and that'll get us x equals 4 for our exponent. Um, sometimes the exponents are easy enough to maybe guess and check with them a little bit, uh, but I would not rely on that consistently because sometimes we'll give you exponents or final answers that are equal to fractions and, and things like that. So we just need to be a little careful on those there. Uh, where people start kind of getting a little bit messed up is these ones that are as fractions. So we got to think, okay, can we rewrite this one half right here as two raised to some type of number here because we can definitely do the 64 as two raised to a number so whoops uh, so we're going to try and get that to happen so uh, don't forget negative exponents make fractions so we're going to use that there so if we do a two raised to negative one then we'll get one half right there and I'm not going to write this out every time right here off to the side, but 2 raised to negative 1 is the same thing as 1 half, so we can swap that out right there. Uh, as far as 64 there, we'll have to think, okay, I think uh, 2 to the 5th is 32, so 2 to the 6 is going to be that 64. And we still have that exponent of 1 half up there. And then since we have that, now we can go negative 1c equals the product of 6 times one half right there. You can go ahead and simplify that in the same step and then we'll finish out by dividing. So yeah, a little bit weird there on the fractional ones. I do want to run through one more just because I feel like those are the ones that mess people up the most. So I'm going to do this little extra practice problem over here. Uh, these, this two thirds and the nine fourths. So um, what I'm going to do here on this case is I'm going to keep this two thirds the same on this side so I got that big fraction right there and then I'm gonna rewrite this other fraction right here nine fourths right there not well nine is is three squared and then you know four is the same thing as two squared now if I write that uh, whoops struggling right here uh, if I write that as three squared over two squared the fraction would be you know upside down we would want the twos on the top so we're gonna also add the fact in that you need a negative exponent there so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite this here as two-thirds and then we're gonna raise it it needs to be squared but then it also needs to be to the negative power right there to get it to flip so if you go and like type it in your cal if you had a calculator you could just go and confirm it here real quick uh, two-thirds raise the negative two that flips it and squares it, so that'd be nine fourths right there. So we can mathematically replace it. So yeah, those fraction ones, those always get people a little bit, so just gotta play around with it a little bit. And then now we can go x minus five, that exponent equals the other exponent. Uh, let's see here, we can do a little mental math here. The uh, two goes into four, goes in negative two times there, and then uh, two down here, and then two times the three. That should get us the negative 
I'm sorry, not two and one. That'd, that'd be one and two there. I'm screwing this up here. There we go. And then that'd be negative three halves x. Uh, if you want to get rid of the fraction, actually, we could multiply both sides entirely by two. And that would get us, we would need to distribute there. That would get us 2x minus 10 and then equals negative 3x. And then we can finally solve for x. We could subtract the 2x and get negative 5x. And then we could divide and get x is equal to negative 2. So that's as about as worse it'll, as it'll get there. I'd probably start, make sure you can do those ones with fractions, especially the ones in the worksheet and everything. So. All right, let's keep it going here. So that's what happens when you start out with equations in uh, in log form, or I'm mean, sorry, in exponential form here. By the way, on the worksheet here, these are going to be very similar to questions one through four. If you want to make that little note there on the um, new updated worksheet. So, all right, now sometimes we'll start out with equations here in log form. And a good rule of thumb when you start in log form, one rule of thumb you could do is you could switch to exponential form. Now this isn't going to be the only in the one the one way that's going to work every time it depends on what we start. But if you have just one log expression, which all of these have one log expression, we can switch it to exponential form and then we could solve. So we start out kind of easy. This first one right here, natural log, don't forget, is the same thing as a log base e. And then what we can do is switch it out of log form here. So I'm going to go e raised to 6 and then equals x. And then after that, you would isolate x if there's any more steps to do. Uh, there's implied parentheses right here around x, so there's nothing else you can do right there on that. that. That is it right there. So if they ask for exact form, you actually would just leave it like this. And then if they ask for decimal form, you would just use your calculator where the E button is. I believe that is a second divide on the calculator. But find that button there. If you want the approximate answer, which means you round it, that would be x is approximately, and according to my notes here, I got... 403 point and uh, let's see 43 I believe the notes here if we zoom out say to round to the nearest hundredth yep round to the nearest hundredth with it which is two decimal places so yeah big thing is switch it to exponential form now occasionally you'll get these ones here that are a little bit more involved first of all right into parentheses anything that's next to log usually to the right of it is implied to be with the log uh, so we want to get rid of all this junk here with the log here. So we'll subtract 6 first. Uh, next, you would divide by the 2. Or that's what I would do, at least. You can technically do a power rule there, but I would, I would avoid that. You, you could bring the power up there technically, but I, I would not do that there. And then after this here, then we will switch forms. Once you get the log isolated, then you can switch forms. And actually, let's go ahead and write that down. We want to isolate the log expression, if possible. Then you can switch to exponential form. So what's a little weird on this one, they didn't actually write the base. Uh, it wasn't like the last one where the base was implied to be E. It's actually implied to be another number here when it's not written. So y'all need to remember that that is implied to be 10, base 10. So we will go 10 raised to 6, and then equals 5x. Okay, now we can simplify this a little bit. 10 raised to 6, I believe, would be a million. It should be six zeros. And then divide by 5 right there. So that will be, well, 5 goes into 10 two times. So that should be 200,000 there on that. So one's getting a little bit big there, but we would expect you maybe a smaller power, but we'd probably expect you to do that one there without a calculator. Not maybe not as big of a power though. Okay. So let's try out this uh, next one here. Uh, there's two things you can do on this one here. Uh, I got one way I think is the better way, but you could technically switch forms right now. Say eight raised to twelve, and then equals x cubed. 
But then after you do that, I wouldn't even write this down, to be honest here. Let me just write it real quick. But 8 raised to 12 equals x cubed. We then theoretically need the cube root both sides. And you might not be comfortable with your powers. 8 to 12 without a calculator is pretty big as well. So uh, what we're going to do instead on this one here is we're going to drop our power down using the power rule that we learned on the last lesson from 3.3. And then we can say, hey, this is the same thing as 3 times log base 8 of x then equals 12 because then what we can do is we can divide both sides by 3 and just make all the numbers smaller and then that's going to get us 4 right there then after that then we can go and switch forms with this here we can go and say 8 raised to 4 let me write it down the right way here 8 raised to 4 and then equals x and that's another one that's getting a little bit large on the powers. You probably would have a calculator on something like that. But as long as you can get to the 8 to the 4th, if it was calculator-based, you could just you know type that into the calculator. Uh, my notes here have 4,096 on that. <clears throat> and then that should be it there on that one. Okay, and yeah, I think that's about it. All these other ones are fairly similar there. So that is what we do when we have one single log on one side. Next, coming up here, they have these one-to-one -one properties. You can kind of look through these here, but I'll just show you it in action here first. So I'm actually going to start here with B first, because uh, this one has a single log on one side and a single log on the other side, and this actually uses that property, that one-to-one -one property up above. It's uh, fairly intuitive. If you have a log of something equals log of something else, and they're the same base, then you can set these things here equal to one another. Just like that right there. Okay. Then we can subtract from both sides. That would be 49. And then we can square root. Uh, don't forget, if you square root both sides there, you do need to put plus or minus there. So some people might forget the plus or minus. The thing we got to remember is you can't log negative numbers so what some people accidentally do is they say oh then they, then that means the answer is only seven but if you actually plug in negative seven back in here to the squared uh, that will make it become positive eventually so we'll be able to log that whole thing right there that would just be you know, 49 I mean that's just gonna be positive 52 right there and that would be possible there. So you will put both versions of your answers. There are going to be some, I believe on the next page here, where we'll get a negative answer, and then when we plug it back in, it doesn't work. The thing you need to do is you want to simplify first. You want to simplify and then check and see if the, the thing is negative. If it's negative, you can't log it. You can't log negative numbers, or actually technically you can't log zero. I don't think we get zero a whole lot in this class but anyways that is that now here's the issue with a uh, the, the a you can only do that little trick of canceling out the logs if you have one single log equals another single log if you go back up here you'll see them talk about that there it has to be one single log equals one single log so we're gonna have to do a different strategy here on this um, you're going to have to condense when you have multiple logs. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. Condense when you have multiple logs. So we'll see if we can run through that there. I'll actually write a common error that people do on this one uh, really frequently here. But uh, we're going to condense any logs that we can. So these two logs here we can condense. If you have a plus in between them, we can condense this and write it as one single log. And you are going to multiply the two things together here. You're going to multiply the 3 and this x minus 2. Now some people will go ahead and multiply in their head. That's totally fine if you're comfortable with that there. But just for your notes so you see where it comes from, I'm going to go ahead and write that out. So this will be 3x minus 6 there. There's still implied parentheses there, technically. Once you get one log equals another single log, then you can essentially cancel those out and set the things that you are logging equal to one another.
and then we can subtract and then divide. Uh, that should be positive two there. Or nope, whoa, positive three here. It's late at night. I guess I'm a little rusty here, but so anyways, that is that. Uh, write down this common error. Have too many people make this mistake. I'll have some people try and cancel out the logs before condensing, and I'll, I want to uh, point out how it's a little different. So I'll have some people say, okay, those logs all cancel, and then they'll say x equals 3 plus x minus 2, which if you go back up here and look at that, that is clearly different, and it unfortunately won't get you your answers. So be really, really careful on that. Um, don't make that mistake. You want to always condense your logs if possible, unless you got one single log on one side and one log, single log on another. All right. Coming up next here, uh, we're going to have some equations here. It kind of starts like the beginning problems here. Uh, the issue is the beginning problems that we started with here. We said go get a common base. And these questions here don't you're not going to be able to do that like we're not going to re be able to rewrite 13 as as 4 raised to a number we can't really modify 4 right here so there's uh, multiple ways teachers will will teach this here i usually teach people to take the log or you can even do natural log of both sides that is one technique you could also technically, the, another way you could do it is you could switch forms. But switching forms is not going to work on this one down below. So I'm going to primarily do take the logs of both sides there. But I'll show you the switch forms. It actually, if you switch forms on this one, it's actually a little quicker. But uh, let's do the log of both sides since that's going to consistently work on any of the problems that we have. So we'll log the 4 and we'll log the 13. It doesn't really matter if that x goes inside or outside the parentheses because we're going to drop it down here using the power rule. And then after that, we just need to isolate x. So get x by itself somehow. And we do that here since it's technically x times a log of 4. We can just divide both sides by log of 4. And then we'll just type that into the calculator. That's a common log, so you can just use the common log button in your calculator. Let me see if I can split screen here with this real quick just to show y'all. So yeah, just log 13, and then make sure you close your parentheses. And then log of 4. Oh, shoot. I got a... Oh, I didn't hit the log button. Okay, there we go. Let's try that again. So yeah, x is approximately, these are usually going to be approximate answers, 1.85, uh, depending on what they said around to, I think they said nearest hundredth there. Yep. And then that should be it there. So I will show you here real quick, switching forms. This works specifically on these next, the, uh, the, this one right here in B, but it will not work, unfortunately, on example 5. Not, not in an easy way there. So if you switch forms, you can do this whole thing where you say, okay, well, that's the same thing as log base 4 of 13, and then equals x. And then if you have the log base button in your calculator, you can go find the log base button and then just type that in. So you get the same thing. Or you could even use, you can use the change of base which, I mean, change of base is the same thing we got written down there. That's where you go log 13 over log 4, which is exactly what we had right there anyways. So regardless, you get to that 1.85. So I don't really care which way you do it, but like I said, it's not going to work on example 5 down below, so that's the only issue. Now, when you have things in terms of base e i would instead of log both sides i would do the natural log of both sides um, so if you if you do that natural log you can skip one step here so let me write it down here if we natural log both sides we would have this 
initially. And don't forget, the implied base of natural log is E. So essentially, those cancel. And then you can drop down as a power rule and just write 4 minus 3x and then equals a natural log of 6. And then you can finish isolating x. Now, some people will go get the decimal for natural log of 6 right away. I would personally get x by itself first. Occasionally, we will ask you for the exact form. So that would be like what you type into the calculator versus the decimal. So um, what I'm going to do is just solve for x here real quick. We would go natural log. I'm going to go ahead and put parentheses around 6 so I don't think things are mixed with it. And then we would divide both sides by negative 3. So this right here would be the exact form. I'm going to go ahead and label it that way. And then if you want the approximate form, the rounded version, you would just type that in your calculator. I would probably use the fraction button or throw an extra layer of parentheses and make sure it does the subtraction part before the divide. Or you could just go like one step at a time. Some people just go like natural log of 6, then they'll hit minus 4, and then they'll hit minus or uh, divide by 3, negative 3, I guess there. And let's see here. Yep, that matches my notes there. Oops, keep it color coded the same. Point seven. Uh, what was that? Seven four. So that'll be it there. Let me make this full screen. So, anyways, that is solving when you can't get a common base. Now, example five. This will probably be the hardest, one of the hardest types of questions that we'll see here, because uh, there's a lot of steps here. So when there's multiple x's, you know, different x's in the exponents here, we'll still log both sides. <clears throat> and then after that, we're going to use our power rule and drop both of these down here. And I'm going to go ahead and put parentheses around it here. There's implied parentheses, so it'll go 3x minus 1. And then that whole thing times a log of 4. And then 2 minus x, that whole thing times log of 3. Okay, now after that there, we're going to have to do a little bit of a distributive property here. So, because uh, you technically have log of 4 times that and log of 4 times that piece right there. So it's got 3x log 4 minus 1 and then log 4. And then over here on this side, this would be 2 log 3 and then minus x log of 3. So really what's happening here is we're making a big giant mess here for a moment. Okay, now we want to isolate x. The best strategy we're going to do here on this is we're going to group up group up the logs with x's. I'm just going to say group up the x's. And then after we do that step, then we're going to factor out an x if possible here. If we do this right, we should be able to do both of those steps here. So what do I mean by group up the x's? I mean, get all the x's with the logs on one side. So I'm going to go 3x log of uh, 4. Oh, you know what? I forgot my 4 there. So yeah, we, we need that there. And then we're going to go minus x log of 3. And then on this other side here, we're going to move this minus log 4 over. So I'll keep the 2 log 3 in the same position. And then uh, we, I said minus, we do need to add that actually opposite sign there. There we go, and I'm checking on my math here. You know what too, I, I screwed up here. That should be, here. I'll change colors just so you can see it there. That needs to be a plus x log there when you move that over there, almost made an error. Hopefully y'all didn't freak out and turn off the video before. All right, and that looks like that's matching my notes here now. Okay, so then after that, we will factor out the x. And the way that's going to look here is I'm just going to undistribute an x out of both terms. So factor, it's like a GCF essentially. We'll be left with 3 log 4, and then just log 3. And then we got one more big step here after this. After we do that, since we have x almost by itself, we can divide both sides by this 3 log 4 and then log 3 so it's going to be this big giant mess here 
Oh, I think I wrote my mail there twice or something. I don't know what happened. There we go. There we go. That's looking better. Sorry if you can hear my dog grumbling in the background. She's a little grumpy right now. Okay, so as far as what you type into the calculator, type this whole thing in. Most people are not going to rewrite it, but just to kind of clean things up, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite it. Uh, personal tips here, because you're going to have a lot of parentheses flying around. I would personally use the fraction button to type that in. Uh, I think most of y'all know to do alpha y equals and then enter. If you do not have the fraction button, you're going to have all these parentheses flying around. I would put an extra layer of parentheses around the numerator to force those to add up together. And then do your division symbol and then do an extra layer of parentheses around the denominator. Uh, if you use photo math on a problem like this, they'll do some condensing rules. Like they'll bring their powers up, they'll condense these up. Uh, I would not worry about that personally. I would just type this into the calculator because right now what we got is exact form. That would be technically correct. And when you type that all in, that should be 0 0.68. If you want to be thorough and check, you could take 0 0.68 and plug back in to those exponents there and then check and see if that works out. I'll also have some people try and do uh, the, the equations. They'll try to do like the intersection of the graphs. Uh, though a lot of times the instructions will say solve algebraically, so that will not be a valid way to solve those, unfortunately. So this is how to solve algebraically right there. So yeah, that'll be the hardest type. Probably only going to be one on the test, but you know I wouldn't just I wouldn't throw in the towel. I would, I would give it a go there. If you do a few of these here, uh, you should be you know prepared for that. So. Okay. Um, Got a few more log equations coming up here, but this one's kind of a special one here where it's like E raised to certain things here. Uh, what we're going to do on this here, this is similar to a quadratic. And a quadratic, like a, we, we, we factor those usually to solve here. So it's actually very similar to, let me use a different letter here, like y squared plus 6y and then minus 16 equals 0. We're going to actually factor it the same way. So we would need to figure out you know, what times what is y squared. That would be y and y. And then what times what is negative 16. That adds up to 6. That would be positive 8 and negative 2. And then we could set those individually equal to 0. We get x equals negative 8 and y equals 2. So we are going to use a similar idea. The only thing that's hard about this is thinking and grasping that at first. What times what is e to 2x? So e to 2x would be the same thing if we use our exponent rules. e to x times e to x right there. Our exponent rule says, hey, if you have the same base, you can add those powers there. x plus x is 2x. So that's actually what's going to go out in front. e to x and then e to x. And then we'll use the same factors that we did here. When you multiply the negative 16 and adds the 6, that'll be x plus 8 and then x, uh, let's see, minus 2. Then we can set these factors equal to zero. Some people will skip this first step. And some people will go straight to e to x is equal to negative eight and then e to x equals two. And then I would natural log both sides because when you natural log both sides here, uh, that will cancel out the e. Now, uh, you can't natural log negative 8. That causes an error, so you just don't write that one down. But when you write this next one down, this would just be natural log of 2. That would be, by the way, the exact form right there. And then decimal form, I got written 0.69. By the way, little squiggly net lines right there. That's the symbol for approximate. So those are a little bit weird at first there, but that's how you do those types of problems there. You do factoring on it. So, all right. So I think that's all the ones that will start out in exponential form. We've got a few more to go here. 
Um, so yeah, let's finish this last page here. Yeah, it should be, I think we got about 15 more minutes here and we should be able to knock it out. Oh, I did, you know, realize too, I'll go back here in just a second. So I, I wrote down on the front page, like what problems, you know, like all that first sections one through four. So I'll, I'll go back and do that here at the end, if you bear with me. Okay. Uh, example seven, we've actually seen one kind of similar here to this here. We have multiple logs on one side. This is another one of those ones where we want to condense the logs. So we're going to try that here. I think there's going to be something a little different that happens on this one. We also have this two out in front. I'm actually going to go ahead and start out with a power rule on that. And by the way, there's implied parentheses around this 2x. So when you bring that squared power up there, it winds up being natural log. And watch out here. This is actually going to be 4x squared, or in other words, 2x times 2x. I do think that comes up as a small thing, like on a future test or quiz. So I want to be careful there on that little thing. That would be easy to mess up. Over here, if we have a plus in between the logs, when we condense the logs, we would need to multiply these two things. Uh, you can go ahead and multiply them now, if you can do it in your head. I'm going to go ahead, just for the notes, to write it out. And then we can go and foil to this whole thing here together. So let's see here. This would be 3x squared. What do we got? Plus 6x minus, you know, here, let me go ahead and combine like terms. Plus 6x minus 2x. So should be 4x and then minus 4. Oh, and I still should have my natural log out there in front. Okay, awesome. So then now here on this one, since we have natural log on one side, natural log on the other, we can just set the things in the parentheses essentially equal to one another. Okay. Uh, we're going to solve this with factor in here. Factor is a lot better if x squared is positive, so I'm actually going to subtract 3x squared from both sides. That'd give me 1x squared. That's going to be nice and convenient. So then that also means I need to subtract 4x and then add 4. And then we can factor the rest of this here. This would be x minus 2 and x minus 2, which means x equals regular 2. You do want to go back and plug in, especially when you start in log form. I want you to plug 2 back in and make sure you don't get 0 or a negative number back into each of the spots right there. As long as you can plug that in, you should be good. Remember, you can't log negative numbers or 0. That's actually going to come into play here on this next one. Now this last style of question that you can see is sometimes you will have multiple logs, but they're together on the same side and you're not going to have a log to cancel out with on the other side. So this is going to be kind of a rare one, not happening all the time, but you're going to condense and you're going to switch forms on this one. So condense and switch forms. So in our case here, if we're going to condense, you got a plus again. So that is multiplication of these things. Watch out. You can see division. Um, remember, division is when you have a subtraction sign in between them there. So I do think that does happen on the homework. But we're assuming you can pick that back up pretty, pretty good there. So once again, I'm going to write it out. If you want to distribute in your head, that's totally fine. It would be log base 12 of 12x squared minus 12x, that's all in the parentheses, and then equals 2. So we did the condensed part. Now we are going to switch forms here because we don't have a log to cancel out with on the other side. So our only way around this here is to switch forms. In fact, if you ever get stuck on these equations, switching forms is not a, a, not a bad strategy if you don't know what to do. A lot of times that will get you unstuck more times than not. Okay, so then we have 12 raised to 2. Always swing the, uh, you know, when you're doing your pattern, swing it around towards the equal sign. 12 raised to 2 equals all that junk. Uh, 12 squared is 144. And that's actually very convenient there because everything's divisible by 12. We can divide both sides entirely by 12. That would get us actually 12 and then equals x squared minus 1x, 
we can set equal to 0 by subtracting 12. And then uh, we can factor. By the way, too, if I'm going a little too fast there on the writing part, feel free to slow it down. Make sure you hear everything, and then, then you can uh, go back and copy back down. Now watch out here on this one, because we can plug in 4. 4 should work back anywhere we plug it. Yep, both of those expressions work there. But negative 3, if you plug it back into right there, or actually over into the 12x, that you can't log right there. You can't log a negative number. So because of that, we toss this x equals negative 3 out. It's technically an extraneous solution. Okay, so be careful there on that right there. So uh, I do believe that should come up probably, you know, on the quiz and uh, probably on the uh, test as well. So be very careful there on that. Can't log a negative number. And remember, you would want to technically so simplify it. So it's not just because it's negative 3. It's because after you plug in negative 3, negative 3 minus 1 would be negative 4 in that parentheses. And that number you can't log. Okay. All right, awesome. Uh, we got one more question left here. It's a word problem here. So uh, we're going to run through this here. And then also we're going to solve for the first time a word problem with uh, using some of our strategies that we learn. Uh, so this one right here, uh, we'll, we'll actually have a day where we do some regression. You could technically do regression here on this, but I'm going to show you how to write out some equations in exponential form in this format of a equal, or uh, y equals a times b uh, raised to x. Okay, so we're going to write a model here for this situation, and then we'll, we'll solve for part B. So uh, for January, I'm going to use month one, and then April, let's go ahead and use a, uh, month four right there. And then uh, we can use those as ordered pairs, and then what we're going to do is write these both uh, as, as two equations here. So I'm going to plug in 1 and 125 both in for the y and x, and then leave a and b as a and b. So uh, just watch here real quick. It'll hopefully make a little bit more sense when I write it out. So I'm going to write that down. That's one equation. And then here, I'll color code it. This next one here, I'm going to go 2,000 in for the y spot. And then a times b. And then we'll raise that to uh, the 4 right there. And then from there, what we're going to do is we have a system of equations. We can technically use substitution or elimination to solve these here, but I don't know if there's a way to eliminate with uh, multiplication here. So we're going to use substitution instead. And what I'm going to do is solve both of these equations here for, whoops, solve for A. And then we'll just set them equal at the end. So now that we have that, now we can go 125, b to the first, and then equals this 2,000, b to the fourth. Okay. After that, then I'm going to do cross multiplication, something y'all learned a lot about in uh, middle school and hopefully a little bit of algebra one. Uh, I'm going to have to mix colors here, so I guess we'll just keep red. 2,000, b to the first is equal to 125, b to the fourth. And then, uh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and solve that by factoring. And I'm going to keep the higher power term. I'm going to keep that as our positive version. Okay, so we'll set it equal to 0. Uh, I believe you can factor out a 125. Yep, you can. That'll be 125b to the first. And then that would be left with b cubed. And then actually minus 16. And then equals 0. Then from there, we can um, just set these equal to 0 individually. 125b equals 0, which isn't really going to get us anything. We don't want b to be 0. And then we'll get b uh, cubed minus 16 equals 0. So therefore, b cubed is 16. And then we will need that cube root 16. I don't know if the author of the notes meant for this to be month March, but oh well. Uh, this gets us a b value of 2.52. We'll just roll with that there. 
And then once you get the 2.52 there for your B value, I would plug it in. Uh, whoops, I guess we should plug into B, right? If it's equal to B, and then we can figure out what A is. And we're gonna have to round this off, unfortunately, because the author of the notes did not make this a very clean number. Uh, I have written down 49.60. And then now we can put that all together as a model. We can go 49.60, 2.52, and then that's going to be raised to x. So this is your model situation right there. Now, unfortunately, that right there, uh, you can't simplify the multiplication because you technically would need to do the exponent part first. So that is as far as you can take it. So now what we're going to do is figure out when the model is going to hit 2 million hits. Uh, a lot of times they will say solve algebraically. So I think initially when we taught you these here, we taught you just to find the intersection of the graph. But here what we're going to do is actually plug in 2 million. And then see if we can get x by itself here. The only way you're going to be able to solve for this exponent is using some of the strategies we've already learned. This is a one where, where we can log both sides. Before you log both sides, though, you do have this extra junk here. So we're going to get rid of that since it's 49.60 times the 2.4, 2.52. We're going to divide both sides by 49.60. If my notes are good here and not the date, that should get us 40,000. What does this say? 322. And 0.58. The more decimals you go out, the more accurate it would be. Then we're going to log both sides. You could switch forms. In fact, I'd probably switch forms if I were solving this by myself. But if you want one way that works, Regardless of what things we have, what numbers we have, log in both sides would be fine. Then we can go power rule over here. This would be x times log of 2.52, and then just one more step after this. After this, to finish up here, we'll divide both sides by the log of 2.52. Just type that into the calculator, and that is going to get us roughly 11.47 months. And that's one of those ones right there. Even though it's 11.47 months, usually you would round a, you would want to round to the nearest whole number. Uh, if we round it down, we will actually not quite be at that two millions. So it hits, so we're actually going to round that up to uh, 12 months. Even though our normal rounding rules tells us to round 0.47 down, we'll round that one up there. And that's going to be it here for you today. Hopefully that was helpful there. Um, and, uh, yeah, just ask questions in class if you uh, get stuck on anything. Thank you.